Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed. From the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat, these are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for. Teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! I've been wondering how many of you folks know what it's like in a frontier town. I know because I live in a frontier town. I'm a frontier lawyer by the name of Chad Remington. And Dos Rios, my hometown, isn't any worse than most frontier towns, and it certainly isn't any better. Now, laws are not. Out on the frontier, we've got some folks who make their own laws. Laws they can often make stick with a blast from a six-gun. And once they start doing that, well, suppose instead of talking generalities, I get down to brass tacks and tell you about one such fellow citizen who became a client of mine for about the shortest time on record. It was a blustery cold afternoon, just a few weeks ago, when to pass the time between clients and trouble, I was playing Canfield with the ex-medicine man, Cherokee O'Bannon, in my office directly above Cherokee's livery stable. Now see here, Chad. Not only are you making me out a disgrace to my former profession, but if you win any more games, I won't even be able to buy a cap off a beer bottle, <laughs> let alone buy a pint of something soothing from the lime waters of Kentucky. Oh, Cherokee, if I thought that any water, lime or otherwise, meant anything to you, I might let you win one game. But in your lifetime, you've already had so much bourbon, rye, and just plain corn liquor that I really can't feel that... Hello. Sounds like someone coming up the staircase. That's uh, probably a client. So let's just call this game off and I'll take my money and go out and leave you alone. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to take that money over to the nearest saloon and get you. Come in. Howdy, Chad. Howdy, Cherokee. Wow, Floyd Hunsacker. What brings you to a barrister's office? Uh, Chad, uh, I've never been to a lawyer's. Well, maybe I'm seeing the wrong man now. But me and one of my neighbors are having trouble. Well, in this case, I want to stop it before it gets any worse. Well, if I can be of any help... I don't know if you can or not. But for old man Barton's sake, I hope you can. Barton? Why, well, we heard here in town that you and Paula Barton were tottering on the brink of matrimony. That's why I want some help before this goes any further. Because if anything came between Paula and me... There ain't nothing coming between Paula and me. That goes for old man, too. What sort of trouble have you and Barton been having, Floyd? Maverick trouble. You know our two spreads run together up just under twin knobs. After the early snow and weather we've had, the cattle's been wandering every which way. You mean that he's accusing you of accidentally getting some of his steers mixed up with your own? Accidentally nothing. He come out and accused me of being a low-down, dirty rustler, and right in front of Paula. He wound up telling her that she dasn't see me again. Well, uh, what about the cattle? Well, they were mavericks, Chad. Every last one of them. It wasn't a head of them that had a brand mark at all. Well, if you'll pardon my intrusion, for the life of me, I don't see what good a lawyer can do. Well, I'm hoping a lot of good. Because after he blew up, Barton had his boys drive 14 head of my stock back onto his place. Stock mark with your brand? Some of it. But, Jasper, Chad, I'm telling you, if there ain't some legal way of getting back that stock, I've got ways of my own of doing it. If Barton weren't Paula's father, I'd have drilled him right there this morning. I'm glad you didn't, Floyd. Because once a man pulls trigger in anger, he generally ends up pulling it again and again. 
to defend himself from the law. Well, I didn't, so that's that. Now, what do you think I ought to do? Well, the first thing you ought to do is wait until Barton has a chance to cool down. Now, I've known the old man for years. He's got a temper like a summer squall, blows up without warning, and subsides just as fast. Yeah. Then, three or four days from now, go over to Barton's place after he's calmed down and talk it over with him. Now, Barton's lost cattle before, and... Beagle! He... Well, that's why I came into town. That's what I wanted you to do. Well, sure, I could charge you $50 and go out to see Barton. But instead of helping you, I'd only be making it worse. Worse? How do you figure that? Wouldn't it show the old Morse back I was trying to be fair about it? Just the opposite, Floyd. If you send a lawyer out to see Barton, it would only make it appear that you were really out to make trouble for him. Chad, you're right. I've had lawyers come after me trying to collect bills in my life. Instead of making me pay the bills, it only succeeded in making me so recalcitrant that I resorted to every piece of chicanery I knew to avoid payment. Now, believe me, Floyd, even though my advice in this case is free, it's well worth taking. And if you really love Paula as much as you say you do, I... Yeah. Yeah. And if she loves me, she ought to talk to her old man. I'm sure Paula can and will help. But the important thing is not to force the issue while it's still white hot. Give him a chance to cool off, to calm down. Certainly, my boy. Wait four or five days, even a week. Let's see Paula for a week. That's great advice. Thanks, Remington. You've been a fine lot of help, I must say. Counselor, if you ask me, which I know you didn't, that young sprat is so fouled up inside of him, he's heading for a fall. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right, Cherokee. And the mood flows in, he is heading for a fall. And it wouldn't surprise me any if it's a fall through a scaffold at the end of a hangman's noose. It wasn't that I'm such a great guesser or unusual at reading character. But from the little I knew of Floyd and from the pale, almost yellow light in his eyes, it wasn't too difficult to read the fury burning in him. Well, despite our good intentions and our good advice, Floyd paced the floor in his little ranch house parlor until nine that night, when he couldn't stand it any longer. Slamming his Stetson on his head, he grabbed his pony and rode over to the Barton place, where, by tapping lightly on Paula's bedroom window, he attracted her attention and got her to come outside. Floyd, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have come over. I couldn't stand it any longer, Paula. It was driving me crazy. I had to see you. I know, Floyd. I wanted to see you, too, but... After what happened this morning, if father ever finds you here, I don't know... Don't let him find me. I don't care. I love you and you love me. Not even your father's coming between us. Oh, he won't come between us, Floyd. Just give him a chance to get over his temper. He never stays mad long. Hey, look, I got an idea. We can ride over to Navajo Springs tonight. There's a padre in Navajo Springs. He'll marry us. After we're married, there, there isn't a thing in the world your father Floyd, could... I think I heard the door open. Quick, get back in, back in the shadow of the... All on. All on. Are you here? Outside? All on. Do you hear me? Y yes, I'm here, Dad. Well, I thought you said goodnight an hour ago and then went to... Well, so you're here, too. Yeah, I'm here. And you and no one else can stop me from seeing Paul. Floyd! Paula, go inside. There are a few things I'm going to settle with this young lobo right now. You stay right where you are, Paul. Your father's looking to have a showdown. You might just Paula, as well... Paula, I said go inside. Dad, won't you listen to Floyd? Won't you give him a chance well, to... Well, never thought I'd have to raise my hand to my own daughter, but... Uh, Wait, uh, you... Slap Paula, will you? Floyd, he's trying to draw his gun. Dad, don't! Try to throw down on me, will you? Will... <laughs> Floyd. Floyd, what have you done? Your father. You saw him. It was him who went for his gun. Dad. Daddy, all right. Get... 
Get the doctor. Paula? Get, get the... Paula. Now get out. Did you hear me? I said get out. I never want to see you again. But Paula... Get out! Get out! Get out! After that, there wasn't much that I could do. But when I heard of the shooting, I knew that now Floyd would be needing a lawyer. So Cherokee and I saddled up and rode out to Floyd's ranch. Don't you understand, fellas? There ain't nothing that means a thing to me without Paula. Well, she certainly isn't going to feel any more kindly toward you for shooting her father. Well, where there's life, there's hope. And when we left town, Barton was still alive. If Paula would only see me. Just send some word. Oh, I can understand you're getting upset, Floyd. But I do believe that even if Barton dies, there isn't a jury in the world that would convict you if, as you say, he drew... Jury? You mean they're going to lock me up? I I was just using that as a figure of speech. I meant that with Barton drawing first, no one, not even Paula, can blame you. They'd better not try to lock me up. No one's going to lock me up someplace where I'll never see Paula again. Man alive, no one's going to lock you up unless Barton dies. And then it'll only be as a matter of form. Now, uh, this is again free advice, Floyd. But I hope you take my advice this time. Yeah? Now, the thing to do is... Wait a minute. Who's that riding up? Looks like the sheriff and a posse. The sheriff and a... And I guess old man Barton died. Yeah? Looks like it, doesn't it? Now, look, Floyd, just don't make any trouble. Now, you may have shot Barton, but you did it in self-defense. But the sheriff has his job to do, and he'll have to hold you until you can have a hearing. So take it easy now and keep a check rein on your temper. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's all right, Floyd. I'll let the sheriff in. Hello, Sheriff. Come on in. Yeah. Howdy, Chad. Thanks. Hey. And I guess you know why I'm here, Floyd. He died, eh, Chef? Yeah. I gotta take you in. Sure. I understand. The rest of me, I guess you want my gun, don't you? I'd be much obliged if you'd hand it over. Sure. I don't need it. Yeah. Because you need it more than I do, you interfere. <laughs> Low-code young fool, you killed the sheriff. Now you are in for it. Either one of you moves one step and you'll be on the floor right beside him. I don't doubt that, Floyd. You don't. Eh? But you've overlooked one thing. There's a posse outside and here they come. What? The posse's coming? Cherokee, quick. Grab his arm. <laughs> don't ever get my arm loose. I'm gonna... <laughs> That's it, Dad. He's a sucker for a lap. Thanks, Cherokee. I'll try one again. All right. Keep him covered, Cherokee, until one of the deputies gets the cuffs on him. With a locoed snake like that, you're never safe while they've got the breath of life left in them. And in his case, I don't think that will be too long. <laughs> return to the second act of On the Prod, our exciting frontier town adventure in just a few moments. And now, Frontier Town. Maybe I didn't say it before. And if I did, I still think I'd better say it again. That's what happens out on the frontier mighty often after a man has carved the first notch on his gun. Floyd's case was no exception. Remember Billy the Kid? 
As I've heard folks tell the story, it was the same thing with him. He was forced to stab a man in a ruckus over a gambling game, and then, trying to avoid the consequences, shot his way across 67 counties in five states until killing became the natural way of life. Well, we did manage to get Floyd down to town and locked into one of the cells behind the sheriff's office. The judge, a good and close friend of mine, wasted no time coming over to the office to find out from me exactly what had happened. By glory, if I weren't a judge, Chad, I'm afraid I'd be out organizing a necktie party right now. Even you shouldn't say a thing like that, Judge. Mob law is as bad as gun law. And furthermore, I've got a feeling that Floyd isn't just out and out bad. He's killed crazy. He's crazy, all right. When Floyd comes to trial, if he ever does... He'll probably be arraigned before you, Judge. I most certainly hope so. Now, I don't want to interfere or influence you officially, but if we could discuss this, well, just like a couple of friends, I think we might all profit from it. Well, I've got a mind of my own, Chad, so I won't be influenced listening. Well, believe me, I'm not holding out any hope or excusing Floyd. But after seeing him, looking into those frenzied eyes, I've got a feeling that Floyd is all haywire inside. You mean he's a lunatic? In a way, yes. And if he is deranged, the place for him is a mental institution. Well, you know the law as well as I do, Chad. And that's a hard thing to prove. But certainly you wouldn't want to commit a man to the gallows when he should be committed to the state hospital, would you? No, of course not. But there's... Well, well, if he is loco, Chad, you could find that out only by talking to him. I'm mighty dubious that anybody could quiet him down enough to where any talking would make any sense. Well, what about Paula? Since she seems to be the basis of his trouble, I've got an idea that if Paula had come down here, she could make him realize we're not fighting him, we're fighting for him. It's a good idea, Chad, but I'm afraid it's too late. Look, look across the street. There's a mob forming already. Chad, Cherokee's right. Do you see them? They're pointing over here. What are we going to do? With the sheriff dead, we don't stand much of a chance. Judge... I think it's up to you to go over and talk to that mob. Huh? The Cherokee can stay here and watch the jail while I go out the back door, hit my horse, and ride to the Barton Ranch. If I can get Paula to come back here with me, we'll find out in short order if Floyd's insane or not. I've seen mobs before, Chad, and I've yet to see one that would try a jailbreak during daylight. However, I think if you can get Paula in here, you may have found the solution. Right. As soon as you're safely out of town, I'll go over and talk to that mob and do what I can. Because if I can stall them even for an hour, it may save one man's life. With the mob gathered in the street in front of the jail, I had no difficulty slipping out the back way, getting my horse and heading for the open range. But while I was just starting to churn up dust... Down in the jail itself, Floyd began to hear the unmistakable, ominous mutterings of the lynch mob. What's the matter with them out there? Can't they hear that mob? They all loco? Let them come over here. No, they're not going to take me. They sure aren't. Hey, you! You out front. Now, what's the matter with you, old deep? Where's that smart lawyer, Chad? Hey, Chad Remington. What is it? What's going on down there? I'm glad someone can hear. Hey, give me a minute, will you, Cherokee? Come on, Cherokee, I just got an idea. What is it, Floyd? Something I could do for you? Yeah, it sure is. You heard that mob across the street. Not only have I heard them, but I've seen them. Well, you know what they're up to, don't you? After me. I'm telling you something, Cherokee. I'm not sitting in this cell and letting them come and take me like a coyote out of a dead fool. Floyd, for goodness sakes, take it easy. Chad says he thinks everything's going to be all right. Oh, Chad says. Chad says. Chad says everything, doesn't he? Uh, you want to be ashamed of yourself talking about Chad that way? He's trying to help you. Yeah, if he's trying to help me, why'd he drag me down here to the jail? Why is he letting that mob form across the street? He'll take care of that mob when he gets back. Gets back? Back from where? He sneaked through the back door and rode out to see Paula so that... She he... went where? 
What's he going out to Paulus for? Well, Billy Blue Blazes, Floyd, if you'd only stop talking and listen for a moment. <laughs> sure, Cherokee. You know how it is. I'm just jumpy, I guess. This gives me an idea. Good idea. Yeah? Oh, I don't know who might be around. I don't want anybody else to hear. Grab that, will you? Come a little closer. All right, Floyd. What is it? Right here. I'll get my arm through these bars and I'll get it. Floyd! Floyd! For pity's sake, let go of my throat! I'm not to let me go of you till I get your gun. Don't! Don't! I'm gonna get you a gun. There we are. Get up from there and open this cell. Well, I haven't got the keys. Go and get them, admit. You haven't got the keys, eh? Well, what's that hanging out of your hip pocket? All right, get up and get this cell open. Got some business to take care of. Some mighty personal business. I'm taking care of it right now. <laughs> Knowing of the lynch mob in town lent wings to my horse's hoofs, and it didn't take me too long to get to the Barton Ranch, find Paula, and start trying to make her understand what the judge and I had in mind. Chad, you don't know what you're asking. But I do, Paula. I'm asking that you help save a man's life, a very sick man's life. But, Chad, I can't go down there and see Floyd and let him think I still care for him. That's not fair either. Well, I... I guess it's a question of which is the lesson. All right, Remington. Reach before I drill you from here. Floyd, what are you doing outside that window? Just getting ready to come in. Like this. That's it, Remington. Just you keep right on reaching. I know there's no use asking you how you got out of jail. But I would like to know what you're doing out here. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you. I'm out here for two things. The first is to have Paul a pack of suitcase and get ready to leave with me. We're going out to the coast and get married. Floyd, you must be... Don't you dare say that. Don't you ever tell me I'm crazy. As soon as we've taken care of your boyfriend here... I'm going with you and help you get your suitcase pack. You're taking care of me, Floyd? Yeah, you bet I am. If it wasn't for you, I, I never would have been in jail. Too bad, Remington. You had such a nice reputation. Well, don't let it ever be said that I held up your wedding. Shall I just back up there against the wall and let's get it over with? Yeah. Yeah. Just like they do in plays. Go on, Remington. Back up. Nice and slow. Because I don't like any fast moves. Is this what you mean, Floyd? Back up as far as the chair and... <laughs> that was beautiful. You knocked him down with the chair. Oh, look out. He's reaching for his gun. <laughs> Why, that murdering hyena? Remington! I'm gonna kill you just the way I said I would! Chad, are you all right? You're bleeding. He didn't do me any good, but... I... You're tougher than I thought, Floyd. I just tough enough to blow you up. He's backing himself toward his grave. Well, Floyd, you're a tough nut. Have you had enough? No, I haven't, Remington. I told you I was going to kill you tonight. You're softening up now, Floyd, and here goes...
All right. You better pick up his gun, Paula. After that, I'm handcuffing him and taking him over to the state capitol. This young man's got to stay locked up for the rest of his demented life. <laughs> just can't get over your narrow escape. That lunatic, that madman. Look at Cherokee's throat. I know, I know. It makes me just sick. Believe me, I'm sick all over. <laughs> As an old expert on materia medica, Chad, I found a dead certain remedy for a squeamy stomach known in the Latin as spiritus fermenti, or alcohol. That is in a palatable form, of course. Now, if you're trying to work me for a drink, nothing doing. You're right, Chad. Just one little sniff of rye? Nope. Not even a few drops of gin, perhaps? Nothing. Not even a glass of beer? Well, maybe a glass of beer. In fact, I may even have a glass of beer myself. You? Beer? Well, how, how come, Counselor? Well, after the way you let Floyd bamboozle you and escape from jail, I figure it might help my reputation to be seen with something with a head on it. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. Hollywood.